Please be seated. Here we are on the first Sunday of Lent, and it feels a bit odd to hear again about the baptism of Jesus because it was just a little over a month ago that we heard similar readings to what we had this morning. But this passage is chosen not so much because it's when Jesus was baptized, but it's about those 40 days Jesus spent in the wilderness, which I'm sure most of you have made the connection is where we get the 40 days of Lent from. In the Bible, the wilderness is a place where one finds a need to rely on God. And 40 is a number used as a time to come to that realization. And so the ancient Israelites wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, finding that it was only through God that they could find food to eat and water to drink. So they found a reliance on God in their time in the wilderness. And Jesus spends 40 days in the wilderness tempted by Satan, yet simultaneously being waited on by angels. And that's the beginning of his ministry, is when he comes back from that time in the wilderness. So Lent, for us, is a spiritual wilderness. It's a time for us to give up something, or take on something, or do something that forces us to recognize that we rely God. So if you've given up something for Lent, if you fasted from chocolate or fast food or carbonated beverages or whatever you might fast from, the idea is that when you have an urge for that thing, when you crave whatever you've given up, you should transfer that craving, that urge to God. You should crave God's presence in your life even more than you crave that cheeseburger or that piece of chocolate. And if you've taken on a spiritual discipline for Lent, the whole idea is to spend a season focusing on where God is in your life right now. Because all too often we tend to think that God's not there in the mundane, but God's with you all along. And taking on a spiritual discipline just helps us to acknowledge God daily. That's what we do in the wilderness of Lent. And I think it's really fitting in year B of our lectionary cycle that we hear Mark's version of the story. Because Matthew's version and Luke's version of the story say that after he was baptized, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. But Mark chose a different verb. He said that the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And I have to say, I feel a bit driven into the wilderness right now. In part, because Lent came so early and I just wasn't ready. but also because Ash Wednesday was a day we were reminded of our own mortality. But not just with the mark of ashes on our foreheads, but with news that 17 people were shot and killed at a school in Florida. We've had another mass shooting in our country. And on the heels of the two police officers in Westerville who were shot and killed in the line of duty. And once again, we're reminded that we have a problem in our country. I'm not going to stand here this morning and pretend that I have the solution because I don't. I don't know what we should do. But I do know what we can't do. And that's what we're doing right now, which is nothing. We can't sit idly by 
while people are dying in our streets. The cost is too high. We cannot allow 17 lives to be the price we pay for the comforts we enjoy. We cannot allow 17 lives in Florida and those two police officers here in our own city. We cannot let their lives be the cost that is paid just so we can enjoy the freedoms we enjoy. There has to be something better for this world. And it's going to start with you and me. It's going to start with having open and honest conversations. Not telling people what we should do because we don't know. There are so many variables involved. Maybe it's a mental health crisis and we need to really revamp how we deal with mental health in our nation. Maybe it's getting better access, reducing the stigma that's on mental health in our country. Maybe it has to do with how easy it is to access guns. Maybe it needs to be harder to get guns. Maybe there's a case for saying that if more people had guns, it would be less likely that people would be willing to open fire in public. I don't know. But what we're doing right now is we're shouting back and forth at people who disagree with us and refusing to budge until they see things our way. And that simply isn't going to cut it. We stand just a few days after our brothers and sisters in Christ lost their lives because of this problem. Because we have sat idly by and done nothing. Because doing nothing is easier than the hard work of working toward a solution. We need to accept and repent of the blood that is on our own hands. And then we need to get up, get out, and do something. We need to talk with one another, not to one another. We need to listen just as much, if not more, than we speak ourselves. We need to hear what others are saying. We need to accept that we don't have the perfect solution ourselves and that the perfect solution is only going to come when all of God's children gather together as one body. This is something that transcends politics. This transcends Republican or Democrat, liberal, conservative. It transcends all the things that separate us because we are all united in Christ. At least that's what we say we believe. And I'm standing before you today that if we have the audacity to say that we are followers of Jesus Christ. It's time we take up our own cross and follow in his footsteps. It's time we stop worrying about what makes us feel comfortable. And we go out into a world full of darkness and find a way to bear the light of Christ. That we go out to a world that is set in its own ways and say there's a better way to move forward. And I don't know what that way is yet. We can only find that way together. Because if I make it to the kingdom of God but you don't, I'm not in the kingdom of God. I'm in my own kingdom. If only the people I like are in the kingdom of God, I'm not in the kingdom of God. I'm in the kingdom of my own comfort. The kingdom of God has come near. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us to say enough is enough. It's time for us
take a look at our world and say, we are no longer bystanders, bystanders in life. We must be active participants in the gospel of Christ. This season of Lent, I pray that you will journey with me through this wilderness, through this scary place where we have no idea where we're going to end up. Other than it will be somehow at the foot of the cross. And if we go on this journey together, we will find that even in the midst of darkness, there is a light shining that the darkness cannot overcome. <clears throat> even in the midst of our fear and our failures and the death that we experience every day, there can be resurrection. There is new life. My brothers and sisters, we're preparing for a 40-day journey through the wilderness. I pray that you will join me in seeking the kingdom of God there and not in the places of comfort that we have made for ourselves. I pray that each and every one of us will be willing to listen to other people especially those who disagree with us, and find a way we can work together and find a way to save one shooting from happening, and then one more after that, and then one more after that. If we can do something different that saves even one life, change the life of our nation, that can reshape the way we interact with one another, if we can do something that makes the kingdom of God more real today than it's ever been before, then my brothers and sisters, I think we have no choice but to go that way. And it's only going to happen if we die to ourselves. We give up our ego. We give up our need to be right. And we simply work for the common good. This Lent, let us be transformed. Let us find our reliance on God. And let us be used by God to change the world.